You know, I'm pretty proud of you for clicking on this video. I, these types of videos don't typically do as well as some of my other ones, which are more about like the ideology of and tips and tricks of being a better programmer. Because when it actually gets down to the nitty gritty, like data structures, I feel like people tend to shy away. They tend to just want to click on videos and dream about being a developer instead of actually learning the things that allow you to become a developer. But I like to make these videos every now and then, so I want to talk about the seven data structures you need to know, the, the most common data structures. And before we get started, uh, I wasn't going to say this, but if I'm talking a little bit off or the audio it sounds a little bit weird or something like that, I ruptured my left eardrum so I can't really hear too well out of that. It'll be fine in like a couple weeks, don't get me wrong, it's nothing detrimental, but if anything sounds just a little weird like how I'm talking, then um, that's why. Data structure, so, well, in short, they're ways to structure your data. Don't overthink it. You may see data structures and be a little intimidated. No, it's literally ways to structure your data. And there are different ways to structure your data depending on what it is and how you wanna organize it and store it depending on how you plan to use it. And of course, the first data structure I wanna talk about are arrays. And I want you to think about it right now. Do you know what an array is, how it looks if you had to visualize it, how you would use it or why you would use it over any of these other data structures? If you can't answer that question right now, then do a little bit more research because data structures are a staple in software engineering. They're in basically every single program that you have ever written or accessed or used. So, well, what I'm trying to say is they're really important, so you need to know them. So an array, by definition, it's a, it's a container object that holds a fixed number of values of a single type. You can have an array of integers, but only integers. You can have an array of floating point numbers, but only floating point numbers. You can have an array of strings, but only strings. I mean, you can even have an array of arrays, but only arrays. And when I say fixed number of values, that is because when you create an array, you determine its length, and that is the length of that array. But the cool things about arrays is that they're indexed. and They're stored in such a way where you're able to access anywhere within the array random access. For example, when you have an array, you have the array name, you have the size of the array, you have the elements within the array, which will also show you the type of that array. So is it an int, double, string, char, array, whatever it may be. And then you have the index for that array. A few operations you may want to perform with this array are traversing. So you can traverse the array that is accessing every single element within that array, whether you want to add them all up and get a single integer if your array of integers or maybe you want to print out every single element of that array of course you can also search within your array by searching you can search by the index or by the element this will just allow you to access whatever element within that array you need and of course you can also update the array so if you need to replace an element you can do that as well now you can insert and delete to and from an array but because they're fixed in size, you can't do that right off the bat. You would actually have to create a whole entire new array and you'd have to do the current size plus one if you're inserting something into that array and you would have to copy all existing elements out of your previous array and into the new array that is of a larger size. And the same goes for if you wanna delete an element. You would just say current size minus one, that is the length of your new array, copy all existing, except for the one you want to delete, into that new array. And that's how you insert and delete. Now your use for arrays, you would use, a lot of times you use an array to use in other data structures like array lists or heaps, hash tables, matrices, stuff like that. But you also use arrays for a lot of sorting algorithms like bubble sort, everyone's favorite, uh, quick sort, insertion, short, this is kind of difficult to say fast, and, and a few others. Now how about a linked list? So a linked list is a, it's a linear data structure where you have all separate objects. The elements of a linked list are not stored in a contiguous location. It actually consists of a sequence of items in linear order that are linked together using pointers. So you would have to access the data sequentially 
rather than having random access like in an array. So when it comes to the elements within a linked list, these are referred to as nodes. And each node is made up of the value as well as the pointer. These are typically known as key for value and next for the pointer. The beginning of a linked list is called the head and that points to the first element in that linked list. And then at the end of a linked list, you have the tail, which is basically the same as everything else, but the next is null. And there are actually three different types of linked lists. You have a singly linked list, you have a doubly linked list, and then you have a circular linked list. So the one we just discussed, that is a singly linked list. So traversal, you're only able to do that from forward backwards. However, in a doubly linked list, you're able to do it forwards and backwards, but also each node, which previously consisted of just a key and a next, also has a previous, prev for short. This is the same as next, however, it is a pointer to its previous, its predecessor node rather than its successor node. In a circular linked list, you can probably guess, it is when the tail points to the head and the head points to the tail. Now for the operations, of course, you can search in a linked list. And remember, this is a sequential search or a linear search. So you'll be starting at the beginning and going backwards, looking for the first element with the key of your choice. So if you're looking for particular words with particular characters, then that can be one. And whenever a character A pops up, then you return a pointer to this element. You can of course insert into a linked list. It is not fixed size. So you can just go ahead and insert to the beginning of it, to the end of it, or in the middle of it. And you can do the same thing deleting within a linked list, same idea, beginning of it, end of it, or middle of it. In the application of a linked list, you have probably used it time and time again, Alt-Tab. If you have never done Alt-Tab, do it right now if you have other windows open, you Alt-Tab and you're able to circle through, this is a circular linked list, whatever applications you have open. So right now you have Chrome open and you may have a code text editor open, right? So you can alt tab from one to the other and it just goes in a circle. Hold down alt, click tab, click tab again, click tab again. You can see how exactly that works. Something a little bit more technical is that it's used in symbol table management for compiler design. Now let's talk about stacks. Stacks is, well, to put it simply, is a last in, first out data structure. It's kind of like when you have a stack of plates. Well, when you're stacking them, the last plate that you stack is the first plate that you pick out of it. Last in, first out. There are two operations when it comes to a stack, push and pop. Push, you are inserting something to the top of the stack. In a pop, you are deleting and returning something at the top of the stack. There are different ways to check the status of a stack. You can peek, that is returning what is at the top of the stack without deleting it. You can check if it is empty and you can check if it is full. Now the applications of stacks, well, you ever heard of the shunning yards algorithm? It is for parsing and evaluating mathematical expressions. So you can use this for expression evaluation and you can also use it to implement function calls in recursive programming. Now, how about a queue? Well, you probably have heard of a queue. I remember when I was younger, I used to play World of Warcraft and when the server was full, I would have to wait in the queue. So if you know anything about that, then you know that a queue is first in, first out. There are two basic operations you can perform on a queue and that is in queue and DQ. queue. So with an in queue, you're inserting an element to the end of a queue. And with a D queue, you are deleting an element from the beginning of the queue. A few applications of queues as well, queues are used to manage the threads and multi-threading and to implement queue systems like priority queues. My camera died, I'm wearing a different shirt, and it's actually the next day. So I didn't want to skip a beat. I was actually planning on going over seven, maybe even eight data structures in this video, but I'm going to leave it at the four that we just went over. If you care to see any of the others, I'm planning, I was planning on going over hash tables, binary trees, and heaps, and maybe even combining trees and heaps and making treeps. Yes, that is a real data structure. It is fairly, fairly uh, specific, however, I mean, it's a data structure. Maybe it's not one you need to know, but it's good to know. So just let me know if you care to see that, an extension of this video going, going over another three or four data structures. I may make that as a future video, but for now, this is what you get. And also, depending on when you're watching this, I just posted a post, not a video, but a post on my YouTube channel as well as over on my Twitter, asking you to ask whatever questions you may have. So feel free to leave those questions down below here, but I may not see them. So go to the post. If you have any questions that you want answered in a QA, and a it can be about anything. I really don't care. Computer science, software engineering, something completely unrelated, doesn't matter. I'm going to pick whatever I find interesting over on Twitter as well as over on the YouTube post. And then I'm going to answer those questions in a video to upload next week.